Did you know that there's a classification of stones that aren't really stones at all, but are almost invisible on imaging and can lead to intense pain? If you've been suffering from kidney stone-like pain, but your doctor can't find any type of kidney stone, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Joey Weichman, and welcome to Stone Relief. As my team and I have ramped up our research to help support the book I'm writing, Kidney Stone Secrets, I've discovered some really interesting corners of the kidney stone world that I have not touched yet because of their rarity. Now, over the last decade I've been doing this, I've encountered probably a handful of people who have come to me with kidney stone level pain, but no signs of kidney stones through any type of medical imaging. And this used to frustrate the hell out of me because my heart goes out to these people. Kidney stone pain is the definition of misery, and with there's nothing that I could do for these people. So as I've come to learn through my continued research for the book, there are two situations that can, can lead to this type of pain without actually having stones being present. One deals with the renal pelvis, that kind of like river delta type of system that drains into the kidney, into the ureters, and it collapses on itself, leading to urine backing up into the kidney, causing it to stretch unnaturally, and just like a kidney stone would. And the other surrounds stones made of gelatinous protein that can lead to obstructions and completely remain invisible under imaging. So today, we're gonna dig into what's causing these pseudo stones and what you can do about it. But first, let's talk about a little background to define the situation, and then we'll look into the actual types of stones that could form and cause these issues. So, as I had alluded to the fact, if you're experiencing kidney stone type of pain and there's like nothing happening on medical imaging, like under an ultrasound or an x-ray or a CT scan, it's very possible that you might be dealing with a protein stone. So, just like it sounds like, these are stones that are made out of protein, but I wanna be really clear up front about something. This is not due to eating protein or protein powders. Like that doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. So like protein consumption or protein powder consumption, even though like, especially like red meat consumption has been demonized in the media and Western medicine, like that's just a bunch of bullshit. That, that's not a real thing. And that's not what causes these stones. There's some other things that are at play, which we will talk about. So now that that's out of the way, we're talking about the rarity of these stones. Now I've only come across a handful of people, but I don't know how rare they are because it really does come up more often than you think. It's just when people experience this type of pain and there's no visible kidney stone, they don't really know where to go. They don't know who to ask. They're not gonna come to me as a kidney stone guy to talk about this stuff. They're just kind of like gonna wallow in pain, unfortunately. But if you've been experiencing this or know anybody who does, very possible we might be dealing with a situation like this. Now, as I had mentioned, they're extremely painful. And it's due to that obstruction that is caused by these stones, just, well, pseudo stones rather, um, just like it would with a more of a dense kidney stone, a calcium oxalate phosphate or uric acid stones. They, they cause urine to back up into the kidney, which causes the kidney to stretch, which leads to the renal colic, which is that insane level pain. Uh, but it's all about obstructions that are occurring in the urinary tract. And these can do the exact same thing, but again, fly completely underneath the radar when it comes to medical imaging. Now, these stones form for a number of different reasons, and there are going to be four different subtypes that we're going to talk about in this video. Now, there are some that are going to be based around like kidney inflammation that's being uh, that's occurring. Now, this is also known as chronic pyelonephritis. Now, this is related to UTIs. So, alkaline urine type of environments that are causing bacteria to form and which is causing issues with your kidney's ability to handle and filter different things that end up in your bloodstream, like protein. And that can cause protein to leak into your kidneys and kind of congealed together into this gelatinous mixture, as we'll see. Now, there's also something called proteinuria, and that's also kind of related to what we're seeing with this chronic pyelonephritis. Now, proteinuria, when it leaks into the actual kidney itself, uh, this is due to damaged glomeruli, and the glomeruli are kind of like the, the filtration unit. So if you think about like a, an air filter tower type of thing, they're filtering out all the particulate uh, from our blood, basically, that's what the kidney does. Uh, and when it's broken, you get more particulate ending up in your kidney like protein. And then lastly, there's end-stage renal failure. And this is the last piece 
of what's happening in kidney disease. And this ultimately will lead to kidney failure. And this is, again, dealing with a filtration issue of your kidney's ability. It's just, again, rated by the glomerular filtration rate, and it's a whole scale um, that really you know, measures your kidney's ability to do its job. And when that gets damaged or you're at the end stage of this, a lot of problems occur, and one of them is, again, protein ending up in the urine. So next chapter, we're going to dig into the most common type that you'll probably see if you are experiencing any kind of a protein stone and what you might want to look out for in the toilet bowl. Okay, welcome back. So the first one that we're going to talk about, we, we've given an arbitrary name of the type 5A protein stone. And again, the naming scheme is totally arbitrary. If you try to talk to your doctor about this, he's going to be like, what? What the hell are you talking about? It's not really anywhere else other than from the study which we use to construct this particular video. So, talking about what you might find in your toilet bowl. This is kind of what you're looking for. I mean, you can't really, I don't know how it's kind of crossed on the video, but they're just kind of like little, they're just like jelly. It's a brown, light brown type of jelly. And, you know, I've encountered a number of people over the last decade who have shown me stuff like this looking in the toilet bowl. I'm like, I don't know what it is. It may look like a, a blood clot or like a clotted blood rather. Um, but it's very possible that it may have been a piece, a small little chunk of protein that had split off from the, the gelatinous whole piece uh, that they ended up passing because the rest of it stuck up in their kidney. But Looking for little things that look like this in the toilet bowl, if you're having this type of pain without a kidney stone on medical imaging, this is what you're looking for. Now, as I had mentioned, these are kind of soft and gelatinous stones, and I, I really liken them to like a jello or like a, a bone broth that really has gelled quite well with the collagen. And they're going to be light brown in color, and this is really one of those stone types that can infiltrate the different cavities of the kidney. And this is where we start to get into problems with pain. So the renal pelvis in particular, when a gelatinous little blob like this would float up and into that little river delta that's flowing from your kidney down here, down into the ureter that would connect you to the bladder, it's going to cause an obstruction and it's going to cause an insane amount of pain. So just like a regular kidney stone, these things can occur. But the problem is, is that unlike a regular kidney stone, which is a solid mass, and you've got urine forcing against it, um, that's going to kind of push it like a hard or a rigid sail, uh, if you would, on a boat, you know, the gelatinous nature of these types of stones uh, makes them hang around a little bit longer because they can kind of like wiggle with the flow of the urine and they stick in the place where they're at for longer, which can cause you know, pain for longer periods of time, which is absolute misery. And the other thing is that they can really kind of deeply embed themselves in the calluses, which are the little kind of like pyramidal pockets between the papilla of the kidney um, that you see if you're taking a look at side of like a kidney diagram. They kind of get wedged up in there, uh, almost like a staghorn stone. Those, those are dense or harder stones, but they're still occupying the different calluses of the kidney. And the cause of this is chronic pyelonephritis, and this is inflammation of the kidney. And we're going to talk about some things that we can do to try to solve this in the last chapter. But until then, we're going to talk about the, the next most common type of protein stone that you may see. All right, next, I want to introduce you to the type 5B protein stone. Now, this one, it looks remarkably different than the last one that we just saw, that kind of like gelatinous type of uh, stone configuration. This is much, much different. And there's a reason for that we'll get into here. Now, this loose layers of protein that are kind of embedded underneath this in varying densities. But one of the things that separates this stone type out is you'll notice it's got this kind of like crust on it. And that is crystallized covering. Uh, and this can be from a wide variety of sources. So like certain pharmaceutical medications can cause this. There's actually a video that will be coming out next week. Uh, if you're following us in sequin here, that we're going to talk about those drug-based stones. Uh, there's metabolic dysfunction that can cause this. And there's also a link to some infection as well that can lead to this kind of like hard shell or, you know, crystal shell that is formed over that gelatinous uh, blob that may be floating around inside your kidney. Now, the causes of this are really linked to heavy degrees of proteinuria. And this is, again, protein leaking through into the kidney, like into the urine itself, because the glomeruli, which are the filtration units, 
have malfunction. And it's my theory that this is related to diet, but there are also another whole host of conditions that can lead to this problem. Uh, and then additionally, hematuria, because blood, again, contains protein, <laughs> amongst a lot of other things, it ends up in your urine. You see blood in your urine that's not from like a hard stone causing this problem. Um, you know, it could be leaking because of a malfunctioning glomeruli. So like, again, these stones typically present themselves with kidney stone level pain without a kidney stone on the radar. And if you're seeing blood in your urine, it should be a telltale sign that you might be looking at a particular stone like this. Now, the color that we're gonna see is gonna vary now. So like, this is just a very basic example. Like the color is gonna shift dramatically. So the other types of things that are contributing to this are the other compounds that are involved. And that is largely gonna be dictated to by this crystal covering and what has caused that crystal covering. Is it a drug, is it metabolic dysfunction or is it an infection that has led to this? So the next chapter, we'll take a look at the next subtype of protein stones that you may see in your toilet bowl. Just a reminder, this information is available in written form on our website. Find the link below in the description. Now, this particular stone type, which is the 5C protein stone, takes on an even different type of morphology. And there's a reason for that we'll dig into here. But as you can see, it has that kind of shell that we observed with the 5B stone, but there's also some different colorations to this that would tell us that there's something else that's involved here. Now, typically you'll see this dark brown shell and it's gonna be very disorganized in the way that it looks. And that's why it's kind of like this crumbly little multiple piece type of nature. And that's generally how you're gonna pass these stones. They're kind of like just a bunch of, bunch of gravel. Now, it's gonna be different colors because it's not only clumps of protein with potential shell on the outside like the 5b stone but what separates the 5b from the 5c here is that there's an element of calcium oxalate that's a part of this now these stones form in the presence of high blood oxalate levels very very high blood oxalate levels and there's also defective protein reabsorption that's occurring so again we're having problems with the way that your body is balancing the filtration of the blood, which is what your kidneys do, and some of it is leaking into the kidney, and it's also combining with the calcium oxalate aspect of it as well, and they kind of make this monster stone like this that's a, a mix or a hybrid of both protein, crystals, and calcium oxalate as well. Now, there's also some studies that point to long-term supplementation with calcium and also vitamin D that may lead to this issue. And if you've been following me for any extent of time, I'm, oh, I'm very, very, very resistant to anybody taking any type of a calcium or a vitamin D supplement. And the reason behind that is because of the sources of them. Almost all of the sources of these two things are really coming from plants these days, uh, which is setting up a poor urinary environment poor absorption um, because your body doesn't really know what it is. Uh, the best way that I've uh, heard this described is from uh, Dr. Paul Saladino. And he talks about, you know, like plant-based protein or nutrients from plants versus animal-based protein and nutrients. You know, he's like you know, Apple iPhone to like uh, Android-based phone. And it's like plants are Android and like iPhone is meat. I, I like, I, I'm an iPhone user, Apple user, so I'm going to go with meat. I like meat. So it's like trying to install an Android app on an iPhone. Like it just doesn't work. The body doesn't recognize what it is. It may recognize a small part of it, but the rest of it's just gonna be like, I don't know what you are. And what the body does with waste is it just shuttles it out of the body, either through your bowel movements or primarily with what we're talking about here, through your urine. So when all those things end up in your urine, well, we start to have problems and it can cause not only just protein stones, but it can also cause a whole host of other type of like calcium based stones in particular, because these two things, calcium and vitamin D are intrinsically linked together. So the best possible sources for these are not from a vitamin, are not from a natural supplement. Again, most of it's coming from, you know, uh, plant-based sourced, you know, get your calcium from dairy, uh, from bone sources or eggshell sources, like animal-based sources and then your vitamin D, your best place to get this. You can get some from dairy, but it's just like get outside and get some sunlight. Uh, and there's also quite a bit of vitamin D found in like 
salmon roe or fish eggs uh, that I've used over the winter months because I live in the northern, uh, northern hemisphere up in Wisconsin and I'll spend a little bit of time in Wyoming. So fish eggs are a great resource for vitamin D when you are maybe sunlight challenged at certain times of the year. Stick around for the last uh, section where we're going to talk about the last type of protein stone and then we're going to jump into things that you can do to try to combat these things. All right, welcome back. I lied. There's only three. My bad. Uh, so three types of protein stones. So I goofed up on the first slide and I also goofed up at the end of that last chapter thinking there was another one. I was mistaking it for a, another video that we're doing. So my apologies. But nevertheless, let's talk about prevention and talk about action items. So as I always say, uh, this is you're, you, if you want to avoid protein stones, you really need to start treating the underlying issue. And I'm not a doctor, not trying to play a doctor here. So these are all the things that I have learned through working with people over the last decade and also through the research that I've done here. So when we're talking about pyelonephritis, again, this is kidney inflammation. This really you know, surrounds solving the UTI issue that is causing these problems. They're offending, uh, which really links to fixing your diet, which eliminates an alkaline urine environment because if you eat a lot of plant-based foods, you're going to be very alkaline and that is not a good thing with it comes to this. So again, fixing alkaline urine will also fix the UTI problem. Proteinuria. Now this is linked to diabetes and also high blood pressure. And <laughs> again, if you fix your diet by going either carnivore or more animal-based with some fruit and honey and dairy and things along those lines, these two things, at least with like type 2 diabetes, not type 1, that's, you know, uh, hereditary, I believe, uh, but regular diabetes, you can solve this on your own. In fact, you're the one that caused it by your poor food choices. So this can be completely solved. And then lastly, with end stage renal failure, this is kind of like, is this what happens here when all this stuff has been ignored over the course of a lifetime? And, um, you know, interestingly enough, uh, my grandma, uh, maybe about a year ago dealt with being in end stage renal failure. And she's was 95 at the time. So the doctor's like, Oh, let's just, yeah, well, that's just part of getting old. And to a certain extent, yes, I do understand that, you know, our glomerular filtration rate decreases as we get older. However, <laughs> we changed her diet, <laughs> getting away from eating all the crappy stuff that she ate, getting her to eat more meat based, uh, as much as you can with a 95 year old now 96, uh, still sharp as a tack, by the way. And, this one away. <laughs> so I just firmly believe that there is a dietary connection to all these things, not only just regular kidney stones, but also potentially with like protein stones ending up in your urine. And again, the odd thing about this is that with protein stones, people can get these without actually being a kidney stone former. And if you follow me again, I, I delineate the population of kidney stone sufferers from the rest of the population somewhere in our branch off from the rest of the population. We didn't really develop the ability to handle plant toxins very well. Uh, that is kind of set us up for failure when we start eating those type of foods. Whereas there's like 80% of the population that can eat those things without any problem at all. However, I see protein stones pop up in people that have never, ever had any type of kidney stone before in the last decade. And again, there's only been a handful of them. But again, I suspect that there are more out there who just don't really know where to turn uh, for resources because there's nothing on the medical imaging. They're in pain though. And their doctor's like, well, we'll just prescribe some drugs and we'll see what happens or we'll go in and we'll do surgery to untold end. So fixing your diet, if you are solving these things, even if you've never had a kidney stone before, can help with all these things because I just firmly believe we're not meant to be consuming plant matter. It inappropriately taxes all of our systems because it wouldn't have been something that we'd have been consuming in high volumes at any point in time in our human history. And then you add in all the environmental toxins like, like phosphate, um, you know, all the pesticides that are being used and things that are in our water that are inappropriate for human consumption. And you start adding all these things up and they're kicking and flowing around through our blood and ending up trying to get filtered by you know, our liver or our kidneys. And we start to have these failures and it's just like, well, duh, <laughs> because we're overtaxing a system that is never meant to be able to handle these kind of things. So really focusing in on cleaning up your diet, getting those things right, eating species appropriate diet of animal foods, uh, eggs and meat, um, dairy and cheeses. Um, those type of things will really 
truly get you towards optimal health and minimize any of the different types of things that could potentially leading to these kidney stones. Are you spending thousands of hours of surgery just to end up with another kidney stone a year later? Learn everything you need to know to say a big you to your kidney stones inside our free community at kidneystones.com.